welcome to a very special show today because I have a wonderful new sponsor and it is Bank of America and it is my bank and it is known to be a relational bank and let me tell you you know me well enough I wouldn't be banking anywhere else if it weren't a relational bank and we're going to talk about that in a little bit I want to say something about my guest today you know, when I've been asked, Valerie, can you explain what executive presence is? I always think of this guest today, Jennifer Chandler, because she exudes it. So here's what executive presence is. It's how you look. It's how you act. It's how you walk. It's how you talk. It's everything about how you show up. So with that little introduction, Jennifer, <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> Really thrilled to have you on the show today. So happy to be here with you today. Thank you. You're welcome. And we started in the first year of this podcast. You were one of my very first guests. That's I'll right. never forget that. Many years ago. Seven years ago. <laughs> seven, well. Wow. And well you fun. have so much more responsibility and wonderful things you've done. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. So stay tuned. Welcome to our podcast, Doing It Right. This podcast reveals authentic stories from successful leaders doing it right. It's about their journey to become a leader, their choices, motivations, and lessons. In essence, how they built successful personal brands. Your host is Valerie Sokolowski, author of eight leadership books and nationally known as an authority on executive presence and personal branding. Let's get started. Here's Valerie. So again, Jennifer, welcome to the show today. And um, you know, brand, brand, brand. You know I'm all about brand and you're all about brand. I've been uh, wondering in the 23 years now that you've been with Bank of America, right? Yes. 23 years. Yesterday, I bet it feels like. It does, by far. Well, that's kind of where I want to go with this. What was it like when you started and how would you describe the brand now? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And you certainly do a great job with brand. I give you um, kudos thank for you. that. And I have the pleasure of working for one of the best brands in the country. If you think about Bank of America and who we are and what we are, and I think down to just the values of the firm, it really resonates with our brand. So mm -hmm. um, in some ways, it's changed a great deal if you think about just technology and how far we've come under the leadership of Brian Moynihan. And in other ways, those values have honestly stayed the same. It's always been great. about serving our clients. And I can attest to that. I can. Well, thank you. So just to interrupt intentionally on that. So when I go to the bank that I go to, um, the same people are there. That's one thing. Right. I'm so great. That says a lot about the culture. Absolutely. And the location I think you go to near Highland Park, we have a receptionist that dedicated over 55 years with us. So if you think about that, and it's story after story, I get the opportunity to send a recognition note once a month, and you'll see 20 years, 30, 40 years. And I think it's a great testament to the firm, but also, to your point, it really resonates with our clients. 40 years. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. It is. What, uh, in all those years that you've been with the bank, Jennifer, what has fed your soul the most? You're now at the top of the game. Let me just tell the audience exactly top of the game and what it looks like. Jennifer is the managing director, the Bank of America president, and head of philanthropic solutions for Bank of America Private Bank. So that's a lot. Do you have... Do you have tennis shoes on most of the day or what, Jennifer? <laughs> we love our titles in banking. <laughs> I think my family still thinks I work in a financial center, which is important as well. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's a long title for a lot of things. But I think you asked around just what the value is, what really gets me excited every day. And I think anyone who knows me and my tenure with the bank, it's been the community involvement by far. Mm -hmm. So we are constantly out doing events, giving back through the Bank of America Foundation, volunteerism. And the beauty of my role now leading the endowment foundation team across the country is I get to work with nonprofit mm. institutions from the West Coast to the East Coast and family foundations as well. So it's really this kind of beautiful um, moment where I've had the opportunity and all the work I do to hit philanthropy and community. So when I first met you, that's how I felt your brand was all about, Jennifer. You were always into everything you possibly could be into that was philanthropic. Is there one situation or uh, give back that you've given to so many that really just, I'll always remember kind of moment. 
There's so many, and I have a passion for education, having been a, a teacher, so literacy is still something I'm very passionate about. Um, but one organization that always resonates me, with me is Special Olympics, because mm. it's that moment in time, I think I was nine years old, I went out to a field and um, a Special Olympics event, and it just pulled in my heart, and it gave mm. me such a focus on how it feels to give back to the community, and it's still an organization I've watched grow and thrive, and we've done work with the Bank of America, so that one's near and dear to me as well. Mm. That's very special. What about the most endearing award? Because you've gotten so many wonderful recognitions. Is there a recognition that stands out? You're kind, and I um, think about the, the recognition awards. It's always about Bank of America, not myself. So I'd have to say um, probably DCEO's um, Corporate Citizenship Award. And again, mm -hmm. if you think about who we are at Bank of America and our values, and we're a large um, organization, we drive profits for our shareholders, but our whole intent is to drive those profits, but to give them back to the community. So when you see a recognition like that in the Corporate Citizenship Award, I think it means a lot. And also to our 14,000 teammates in North Texas that are giving back to these organizations. So that one means a lot to us. Well, that just takes me to another point about you that I know. You are a mentor to so many young people in her spare time. So when you mentor these young people, Jennifer, what do you say to them about their career and what the life is like as they climb the corporate ladder? Well, I continue to think mentorship and sponsorship is really important in both directions. I'm constantly mm -hmm. learning. I love what you do and coaching. And I think you have to always have someone you're learning from, but also paying it forward and sharing with others. And I have to say your book has actually helped because I put oh. some of it on the mentee to say, before we Thank meet, you. do your homework. And, and we still have the, the book and share that. Um, Which so one? That, Which one? The morning mentorship. Monday, yeah. Yes. Monday morning leadership for women. Yes. Good plug. Wow. No guest has we ever do. said that. Thank you. No, honestly, because we're we're busy and I first thing I tell a mentee is to be prepared to come with questions real questions that we can act on and I can give you advice so the book does help Thank with that you. um but the other things and I think it's gotten better over the years is I try to be really honest and that's the same thing I asked of any coach for me you know feedback is a gift so mm -hmm. I think you need a mentor and sponsor that's going to be really candid with the feedback I'm also very big on strengths and strengths finder and honing in on those strengths and I think there's so many great um, individuals I've had the chance to mentor that once they find that strength and they can really elevate that they can tend to do better and stronger but um, I think in addition to that it's taking the leap Often mm. I see colleagues, teammates waiting for that perfect moment in time, whether it's waiting for that moment in life when they're going to have enough time or being afraid to take the leap. And I think having confidence that you can learn and the work ethic is there and some of the other things will follow is really important for people to understand. That's a wonderful thing to tell people because this whole thing about imposter syndrome, I've told the audience this before, I've interviewed many, many men and women at the top and every single one says, right. of course I have imposter <laughs> syndrome from time to time. Right. I think that keeps us humbled. For sure. And I, I laugh. I won't name the CEO <laughs> because it was before Moynihan. Go back. Okay. Um, and I'll never forget one of our CEOs had come to Dallas to visit. And this is before the internet. And he said, you know, I still go at night and look it up in a dictionary. I still go at night and look <laughs> it up in the newspaper. Um, and that just really resonated with me. I'll never forget that moment in time that we're all learning every moment of the day and nobody has it all figured out. I wish we did, Jennifer. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see, what else do I want to ask you today? I think I want to ask as a, a mom uh, and wife and now grandmother, what's your day like? Oh, my goodness. Um, we try to be consistent. I will say that. In some ways, every day is different. But we started off the, the same and, and try to have routine. But And you've got how many children and what are their ages? Four children, 11, 14, 16, and 17. Did so you hear that? Two drivers. <laughs> yes. Two drivers? Yes. And your husband is an executive? Yes. Okay, just had to get all that in. Okay, go and ahead. he is day. a lifesaver. My husband is a saint. <laughs> um, but we do start every morning with a walk at 4.45 a.m. And I have to say, it is my favorite hour of the day. We reflect. There's no phones. It's quiet. That's how we organize the day and mm. who's going where and who needs to do what. Um, but love that moment. Rain or shine, we're out there. Our neighbors kind of laugh. It doesn't matter if it's an ice store and we're out there. Um, and then a, a real routine. We have breakfast as a family. That's the one time, I believe, um, to get everybody around the table is important and dinner's a lot harder. Yeah. 
all of the sporting events, but try to do that, level set for the day. And then I'm off and running and uh, all Literally. over the <laughs> Metroplex or the country. Um, and again, my husband is a saint who helps uh, keep things moving along. And then we have lots of sporting events, lots of studying and extracurriculars that we do at night. And, um, you know, I try to bring the, the kids with me if I'm doing a volunteer event after hours or on mm -hmm. a Saturday as well. So. You know, I remember years ago, when we first were working together and you had your children at one of your speaking events that you yes. were kind enough to invite me to and I just looked around and I thought that's that's really special bringing the children into your world to see mom is busy and mom is still mom so how old are the children yes yeah, so 11 14 16 17 that's a busy time it is it's an important Can, time tell us a story about your shoes the different shoes that I the shoes that you okay. had to take off as yes. you were going okay, to the field the story. <laughs> um, so one thing I try to tell mothers is just um, not to feel guilty I think sometimes we feel guilty whether you're a mother or not the, the other thing I always say is everyone has someone everybody mm. has a parent they have a brother a sister someone they're taking care of so what I'm experiencing mm -hmm. isn't unique to just working mothers I want to say that first and foremost there's also a lot of single dads um, but for us it's a team effort and I think the story you're referring to is I was trying to make a soccer game for my youngest and I packed everything. I do a lot of costume changes because they get mortified if I show up in heels in a suit at the game. <laughs> so I brought my own costume change to put on the, the school gear, had packed her bag to the nth degree, the snack, the ball, the everything except the socks. So I get there to the elementary school. I had changed. We're almost on time. And she's just welped with tears. And their uniform is yellow and blue. And um, she has no socks. She's got the shin guards, but nothing to put them in. So I look over to my husband, who had rushed from Plano, Texas. And he had on blue and gold socks. <laughs> they happened to have a big Jesus on them because I had bought them for him to keep his faith. And I looked at him, I said, you know what you have to do? And sure enough, um, he was so sweet. He took those socks off, he put them on, she sticks the shin guard in there. And I could not believe it. Child has never gotten a goal before or after, but that baby girl put those things on and got a goal. So, <laughs> but the moral is uh, <coughs> it happens. And I think we beat ourselves up and nobody's perfect. And I tell myself this, it makes me feel better. The kids build resiliency. They yeah. know how to adjust and how to adapt. So. Well, that leads me to a question about a leader, and particularly since you're a female, a woman leader. What are the, what are the attributes in this world that we're living in now um, that, you, that you just really embrace? I like to say it's the VUCA world. You've heard that, I know. Yeah. For the audience, VUCA means it's a volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world. That's a lot to deal with for anybody, whether they're working or not. So I'm curious how you navigate in today's crazy world. And honestly, if you look back at my career, I get asked the question about the career progression. And I have to say, overall, by far, being flexible and adjusting, especially during time of crisis, has been mm. the differentiator. Whether it was um, the 2007, 2008, and there was a opportunity to raise my hand and help, whether it was companies we were merging with, I would find some colleagues to be a little unsettled and put their head down. To me, that's when you raise your hand. And most recently with PPP and COVID, I raised my hand to help with our communication strategy. And we were literally building the program with the SBA as it was coming out. Um, so resiliency and flexibility. Mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, you know, it is changing so fast. And you read it the is. stats, people will change careers so many different times. So I think and when I'm hiring talent, what I'm looking for is work ethic and that flexibility, adaptability and probably the sock story is a good one, but I feel like I'm doing things like that all day long. <laughs> Adjusting, <laughs> we use the word pivot a lot, um, but you adjust and you pivot and then you embrace a decision and move forward. So about decisions, mm -hmm. you're making decisions all the time. One of the things you shared with me as your top takeaway in your journey of, toward the top was that you, you take time, as much time as you can, to make decisions. What does that amount look like? <laughs> It's a great question and sometimes you have to go slow to go fast and mm -hmm. I have a great mentor that's helped me over the years and he's always said it's either yes or no or get information and yes or no um, but you don't want analysis paralysis and the beauty of Bank of America is we have um, expertise in just about every area whether it's a legal partner a product partner um, and so the good thing is I can tap someone much smarter than me and we have diversity of thought 
So what I like to do, if there's a tough situation, get the experts around the table, diverse thought. Um, but to be honest, I also intentionally pause. And that goes back to oh. volunteerism. And one of my favorite stories was I had to make a really tough decision, a lot of dollars involved, heat of the moment. But I had committed to volunteer at the Notre Dame School downtown with special needs. I was a team, I need to step away this hour. These kids are waiting for me. And I took that hour and in the ride there and during the time with the kids, I had a chance to reflect. What was the right decision between A and B? Mm -hmm. And I came back and we resolved the issue in an incredible way. And I just use that example to sometimes pause, whether it's going on that walker in the morning or sleeping on it overnight. Um, but again, that's a balance of not taking too long at the same time. It's getting the facts, diverse thought, um, take a moment to reflect on it and then make the decision. And make the forward. decision. Mm -hmm. When you've made a decision, we all have, that didn't turn out so well. How do you pick yourself back up and not beat yourself up? Well, I um, have an incredible leader, the head of the private bank, and one of my colleagues had made a mistake one day and it was feeling terrible, and I heard her tell them, look, I make a few mistakes every single day, and I go back and I reflect on that, and then I also look at worked well. If you look at um, just incredible leaders over time, they'll all be the first to tell you they make mistakes. So I think it's sure. learning from them, moving on, and then having the humility. Um, there's nothing better, something I respect greatly is when a colleague will just let me know and call me in advance. Jennifer, I think I've made this mistake, but here's how we've remediated and here's what I've learned. So I think it's owning it, mm -hmm. um, not passing it on to colleagues and others, own it, whether it's your team or a couple down below you and embrace it, learn from it and move forward. I really like what you said about that because it's, uh, it's not a leadership trait when you're blaming, doing the blame exactly. frame, owning it sometimes when you know you really don't own it. Right. So thank you for that. You talked a lot with me about collaboration and um, not going it alone. Tell us a little bit about how that's worked for you. Well, it, everything in life to me is a team effort. I think that makes it more enjoyable. Even when you ask about my family, we say Team Chandler a lot. Of team Chandler, I like that. Um, but one of the beauties of being at Bank of America is the teamwork and the collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I get asked about being in a big institution versus a small. And for me, what I've realized over the years, whether it was high school or in, in my community, was the power of impact when you can bring people together is so much greater than going at it alone. And then I go back to this ever-changing world. We can not be experts in everything. It's just changing too fast. The information's coming out so fast. So to know you've got someone that has the expertise that you can call upon is helpful. And then I just think the days are more enjoyable. Everybody brings something different to the table, a different perspective with how you're doing something and educating. And it's a lot more fun to win together than alone. That's, that's really true. Well, that leads to who you are and your values. Where did your values come from? I'd say family, and I'm big on family and my faith um, early on in life. It's just something that was instilled in us, and I think um, getting out of yourself and giving to others and um, has really meant a lot to our family. I still see my father volunteers two times a week at a nonprofit here in Dallas, and that's how he enjoys spending his time. So it was modeled for me um, from both of my parents who were just you know great to our entire family. And again, my faith is a big part of this. And as I look at mentors over the years, I've had corporate mentors, I've had personal mentors and I've tried to balance and look up to people that I know really mm -hmm. stood and let their values lead their day every single day and I've had some great ones over the years. Is there anyone that you particularly admire whether it's someone we know or not? could be even someone famous or historical or whatever. There's a few. Um, I had a priest growing up. He, he passed away, but he was fairly well known in, in the community. And he had started a homeless shelter here in Dallas, Father Jerry Hill. And he was someone I looked up to for many years and several leaders in the bank who are phenomenal. Um, and then one um, global leader is Kay Bailey Hutchison and Senator yes. Hutchison, and yes. former ambassador to NATO, is someone I've enjoyed watching um, because she's brilliant. She knows her stuff. She prepares. She's a Texan and a Longhorn. And um, I just admire her quality, her approach, and the way she communicates. That's nice. Hope she's listening. <laughs> oh, so many things. How did you, <clears throat> one thing that I've been asked by people, how do you earn a place at the table? How do you earn a place at the table? It's a great question, and <laughs> earn is the key word. And a couple of things, I think you earn it every single day. 
I have a sticker on my desk that says what got me here won't get you me there and just you earn it every single day I come in and I earn my job and um, I see it that way but I would say over the years it's the small stuff and I'm watching that when I'm recruiting as well I tell people I'm watching who leaves the conference room who's the last one to leave and pick up that last item from the table who's the person at the habitat build that stayed till the very end to box up the lumber in the the cabinet and so I think it's the small stuff over the years and um, when you think no one's watching mm -hmm. is when for me I've earned the seat at the table and then doing the things outside the job description so I go back to community volunteerism or starting the women's organization in Dallas lead for women at the bank our employee network it was those forums that got me to the top of the building for the meetings with the leadership council sure. and senior leaders and prior CEOs to talk about what we were doing. And later, obviously, the business positions came along with it as well. But it, it truly is the small things when you think no one's watching. All of that is fabulous. And, and what I'm visualizing is saying to people, to young people, uh, open your eyes yeah, exactly. <laughs> and look around. And what can you do for someone else? And I'm making a point of that, Jennifer, because we are living in this VUCA world. Right. And unfortunately, often it can be more of a self-centered right. uh, kind of an attitude. Enough said. Right. So have you had situations where you've had to have tough conversations with someone, whether it's about their work style or... Uh, something that isn't fitting within the values of the bank? What tough decisions or conversations yeah. have you had and how? It's a good question. And the great thing with Bank of America is it's part of our culture. Those things are going to come out naturally because we are all about the client first and lifting each other up in a way that's very collaborative. And I try to model that. It goes back to if there's an issue, not passing blame. It's also doing the great work together, collaborating with not just one person taking credit. We do everything in a very collaborative way. And I would say culturally, those things just kind of work their way out. Um, that being said, I have gotten more and more direct as I'm coaching someone. We talked about it with mentoring. And um, I do believe being direct and constructive with people is important in real time, mm -hmm. not letting things linger. So we have a culture of leaving a meeting. You know, I would have maybe done this a little bit differently. Here's a way. But most importantly, it is modeling it by mm -hmm. far. I think if you model it, the next generation sees it and um, will you know, replicate that as well. But we're blessed. It's part of our culture. And we work hard to maintain that. Well, and you do. The bank does. And it's, it's that whole thing, Jennifer, about the leadership shadow. Right. And that's another point I'd like to make the, for those people who are moving further in their career to realize that wherever you are, in your career you do have a shadow right and it's that shadow that you can't get away from is your shadow right <laughs> <laughs> and yes it can be the little things like did you pick up your cup right yeah that's a great point thank you for that mm -hmm. i want to talk about image since presence is very much a part of what i do what part does one's image and clothing play in today's world because we used to have I used to do a lot of workshops right. on professional presence and now it's been remote and people are on zoom and all kinds of things yeah. but I've never seen you be any different than the stunning classic woman that you are. Well, you are kind. And it, it's funny because if I could wear a uniform, I'd wear a uniform. And I tell my <laughs> kids to go into the medical <laughs> profession and wear scrubs. Um, I think that the biggest thing for me is it's just like you asked about my day and starting at 545. To me, you set the tone of your day by starting strong in the morning. And I have to admit, I got dressed mm. every day in COVID. I just couldn't take it. So Did we, you really? Even if I had the leggings on, I felt the need get up, be ready for the day. And I think it just sets the tone. It makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. Get dressed for church. And I, um, it's not that I think the superficial matters. It's something that is more about, again, take the time, be prepared for the day. It gives you a moment to, to reflect. Um, and then my husband says, sweet, he just says, don't give him anything to talk about good, bad, or ugly. <laughs> just <laughs> stay the course. That's great. <laughs> Say that again. I want to hear it he one says, more time. He says, just don't give him if something's too extreme in one way or the other. We try to stay balanced. So, <laughs> um, But again, if I could wear a uniform and it didn't matter, I, I certainly would. But again, I think it's more about um, just taking the time to prepare. My son's a Boy Scout getting ready for Eagle Scout. And uh, I, I laughed as he put on his uniform for one of the last times last night. But we had that talk around why it matters and button up and if you look at military and things, there's a lot more to it than I think just the, again, the superficial. We've got to get back to it yes. in a lot of, yes. lot of ways. Right. 
Oh, my goodness. Um, how would you know? I've been wanting to ask you this because you, you are making quite an impact. You really are. How do you know, you, that's doing it, that you have made an impact? And how does it feel? Every day is a different day, and you want to make, you know, wake up and make a difference. And it mm -hmm. sounds so you know, high level or cliche, and people ask, how did you go from teaching to this? But I really do think every day we make a difference. And just last week, we were at Feed My Starving Children, packing up food, and then we'll do a major um, client acquisition or you know, help them through an important moment in time in, in my day job. And I think it all matters. But for me, it's not the big numbers. We're a big institution, and we've logged over 140,000 volunteer hours this year, and we're going to give out $5 million to the community. And I love mm. the big numbers, but it's leaving a volunteer event and hearing a story that I get in the car, and I get that matters. And where we are, I hear story time and time again where my favorite one is we're giving out backpacks at the Mayor's Backpack Fair, and I'll have a colleague that says, I was on the other end of that line. And so to see it come full circle wow. or in someone's career, and even if they're surpassing me, I love to watch people move up in the institution that I know have worked so hard and earned it. So it's the little the stories one at a time that keep me going. Do you journal? I do, yeah. So talk to the audience about what that does for us. I do it for a few reasons. One, I start with a list every single day. That's how we know everything gets done and makes me feel better that I'm you know, accomplishing what needs to be accomplished. But the journaling goes mm -hmm. back to reflecting on the positive. It is really easy to put your head on your pillow at night and say, what did I didn't do today? What did I not do? What you know, mistake did I make? Mm -hmm. And for me, when you stop for just a minute to think about all the great things done in a day, of course, there's learnings by journaling and taking just a moment. It's those blessings. And for me, with the kids growing up so quick, too, and my husband, it's just a moment. I mean, I feel so blessed to have them in my life. Mm -hmm. And that moment to just pause and reflect on that's really important. What a blessing. Absolutely. You're right. That's a big blessing. One of your other uh, takeaways that I wanted to talk about was, and you've alluded to it, Jennifer, you said making time for what's important brings energy. Right. It's, a, it's so true, and I get asked about the day. Everybody's got a busy day. I mentioned it. Everybody's got siblings. Everybody has life. I, mm -hmm. I never think anybody has more hours in a day or more important things to do. It's a matter of choosing what you're going to um, focus on and do. And I'm a big person in saying yes. I sometimes get told, Jennifer, you should say no more. But it's all the yeses that have created the best moments in time. So I think you do make time for what's important. That's why I start with the walk. I think the health is important. Sleep is important. You've got to shut it off regardless of what you got to do the next day. So mm -hmm. those two things are non-negotiables for me. Um, and then again, I mentioned a couple of stories, but taking a minute to volunteer, 30 minutes or an hour in a week, is not big in the grand scheme of things. And it just completely level sets me on priorities. What we work on every single day is incredibly important. But when you step away and you're at a children's hospital, we're at Ronald McDonald on Sunday, and mm. you really are, I think, a more balanced person. And that's the way I see it. I'm um, also personal development. And you've been great. You, you know this better than anyone. Uh, but you have to continue to hone your skills and take a minute to reflect, read, learn, you know, listen to a podcast, whatever you can for personal development as well. Listen to this podcast. That's right. Because <laughs> it's doing it right. That's right. When, uh, when we were together one time several mm -hmm. years ago, talking about saying yes, mm -hmm. we had a conversation about when to say no. Yes, we did. <laughs> Do you remember that? You're one of the ones reminding me, yes. <laughs> so tell us yeah. about what that was about, since you said say yes, right. but... There's it, times to say no. No, you're absolutely right. And I think it's, again, making when you make the decision to spend your time with what's important to you, you are going to say no to certain things. So it's a couple of things. I think a quick no is much better than dragging things out. And the further along in my career I've learned that, the better for everyone involved. A quick no is good. Um, and then I think... In How do many, you say it? Excuse me for No, thank you. And you actually helped me. I think it's more in offering direction. That's where I was going. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a no for me. But it's an incredible introduction, and that's one of my favorite things to do around here, especially across the country and in North Texas. No, I can't join your board, but I have someone that's even better. Great. And truly, it has been. I've seen so many organizations that have benefited from a better, stronger person that's going to be on that board mm -hmm. or helping with that roundtable discussion, whatever it may be. And it's lifting up others, but I think the more I see that really working and, and talent being connected with talent in a great way, it makes me feel better about mm -hmm. saying no. That is such an important point in anybody's lives, and, and I'll take it to customer service. 
when someone says, I can't do that, right. I want to take them into a little corner yes. and say, can I <laughs> share with you maybe a better way to say that? Which is simply, well, while I'm not able to do that, what I can do is, right. audience, write that down. While I can't do that, what I can do is, and then you're, you're leading towards something that's positive. And so many times, Jennifer, I go into stores, just normal stores, right. and I'm getting this, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do right. it. So I loved what you said. Well, and I like to say not no, but how. And especially yes. in an institution like ours, we can typically find the answers. Uh -huh. So, no, I love that comment. And I actually spend every Wednesday at one of our financial centers, and it's one of my favorite times of the week as we prepare for people to come through the doors to see us. But it's not only that and problem resolution, it's the simple thank you for being a client for so many years. How are you? You know, it's just the um, courtesy. I think client service is so important and um, you're absolutely right. So it's finding those solutions, but it's also just how we treat every single interaction. And I've never been with the bank forever and I've never had anything but positive uh, interactions. And that says a lot to what you mentioned earlier. It's how you hire. Right. It's how you hire people. Absolutely. And how do you vet people to know? And then if heaven forbid, it didn't work out, right. how do you handle something where you've hired someone and it didn't work out? Well, the, you know, I think it's like anything else in relationships too. It's yeah. got to be a fit both ways. So typically I've been really blessed. We've got great work we do on the front and we have a lot of people that want to work with us, which is a, a great Absolutely. problem to have. So we're very selective. I think it's important to have the right team around you. For us being as large as we are, sometimes someone's just in the wrong position. Maybe they're in a sales role and they're really an introvert. And if you can get them in that other position, they're going to thrive. So the greatest way to handle it when we can is find the right position for the right person. The other thing is helping someone go through the process to understand their strengths, right? Mm -hmm. You do this day in and day out. Are we really the right firm for you? Is this really where your heart and your passion is or is there other things? So I think it's coaching and it goes back to just the quicker. I'm big on development. I get asked that if you read different books, develop or move on. I do like to develop where we can and invest and we've got a lot of great programs to do that and find the right position. But if it's not the fit, you have the, the conversation and thankfully I haven't had to have many of those. I bet you have not because it's a wonderful place to work. I am so very, very proud to have Bank of America as a sponsor and looking forward to many other leaders who will yes. be sitting in that chair, Jennifer, and telling their story. Uh, if you could leave us with one maybe philosophy or whatever you'd want to say to the audience from you to them, what might that be? That's a great question. I think just the philosophy of just make the most of each day. I mean, we are blessed to be here. And for me, I wake up every morning with that mentality. And for whatever that means for you, it may be different. But we wake up, we're blessed to be here. So I think it's bring enjoyment to those around you. Make the most of it to make it fulfilling and That's own it. Beautiful. I don't think you can rely on anybody else for your day by yourself. Got to own it. Mm -hmm. Accountability. That's right. And that's beautiful. There's one more thing I want to ask you. I'm sure you have a vision for, let's just say, the bank. What would that be? Well, we're very much in line with our CEO's vision and, and that of our shareholders, but that is to help our clients live their values and to make a difference. And for North Texas, I think we're seeing that in a few ways. And hmm. so one of the, the visions, and we're seeing it day in and day out, is to help more people with home ownership. So we have an incredible grant program where we're paying the closing cost and the down payment, and you can actually layer it with City of Dallas grants. So every week, I mentioned I go to these financial centers, and um, to see that happen and just the individual stories, and they're building equity immediately in these homes, that's transforming lives. So when I look at the vision for North mm. Texas, we've had this economic boom, close to 500 people moving here a day. My vision is that all tides rise together, the Southern sector, that we have the jobs, we have the people, and if um, we do this and others step up and do similar programs, um, we're gonna rise together in North Texas and close that economic divide. And we have something similar with a small business grant. I know you'll have other Bank of America sure. teammates on and they can probably speak to you about those programs, but they're changing lives and we are leading the way in that in North Texas. And I think that's gonna um, transform the city. And that's my vision is to again, see that economic divide close and all of us rise together. All of us rise together. Well, that's beautiful. Shouldn't that be what everybody thinks about? Let's all rise together. Exactly. That's why I'm so thrilled to have Bank of America, my bank, as my sponsor, and to have you, my first guest, representing that sponsorship. So thank you, and Absolutely. I'm looking forward to many of the other people that you'll bring on the show. Thank you. 
And thank you, audience, always. And I want you, if you haven't gone into Bank of America, try them because you just might switch depending on what's important, which is you. And that's why it's my bank. I walk in and guess what? They say, hi, Valerie. How's that? I walk in and I make a transaction and they say, thank you. How's that? That's relational banking, people. So again, thank you, Bank of America, for being my sponsor and for having you back on my show again as a very special friend. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a client. <laughs> You're very you welcome. to do all the other things. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Here's my Valerieism for today. Whatever you do, every day, do it, but do it right. How's that? And we've talked about that on the show. I love the title of my show, Doing It Right, because I get asked or comments when I meet people and they'll say, doing it right. Yes, yes, I understand doing it right. And I'm so glad it came from a book. So the rest is history. Whatever you do every day, do it, but do it right. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time. Thanks for listening. To receive Valerie's voice, free monthly leadership tips, and to learn more about her leadership programs and coaching, visit her website, ValerieAndCompany.com. Next week, we'll be here again to inspire, engage, and equip you with teachable points of view from successful leaders who have been doing it right. Until then, lead authentically.